victory begins in the earth. Point number one. As a man thinketh in his heart, so shall his life be. As you think in your heart, so shall your life be. When you examine your life today, if there is anything that strikes you as not good enough, check your heart. Check your heart. Your heart keeps you alive. But what you think in your heart determines the type of life you live. I'll say that again. Your heart keeps you alive. As long as the heart is still beating, you are still going to be alive. But what you think in your heart will affect the type of life that you live. Whether in life or joy or sorrow. But my prayer is that joy will be your portion in Jesus' name. What you think in your heart will determine whether it's a life of fear or a life of peace. But I declare concerning you today, may you experience a life of peace. What you think in your heart will determine whether it's a life of progress or a life of failure. But I'm believing God and praying for you today that your own life will be a life of progress. What you think in your heart will determine whether you live a life of health or a life of sickness. But I pray for you, may your own life be a life of health. And what you think in your heart will determine whether you live a life of prosperity or a life of poverty. But I'm praying and decreeing into your life May your own be a life of prosperity. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 29, Jesus Christ said to them, According to your faith, so be it unto you. In other words, what you are thinking and believing, so shall your life be. I pray for somebody here. May you believe that your tomorrow will be all right. May you believe that everything will work out right for you in Jesus' name. Point number two, you are more capable than you think. Please write the points down as God opens it up to you. You are more capable than you think. Sometimes you doubt yourself, can I really do this? Am I equipped enough to accomplish this task? If you doubt in your mind that you are not able, it's very likely you will fail. If you are doubting that you cannot, that you are not able, it's very likely that you will fail. But the message for you today is that God has equipped you to do much more than you think. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, Philippians 4, 13, it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In other words, you are not alone. If it is impossible for you, is it impossible for God? Let me ask again. If that thing is impossible for you, is it impossible for God? So you must Reorder your thinking because your capability is not dependent on just yourself. It's dependent on the God whom you serve. So you do your best, but you trust in God to finish the rest. You do your best, but you trust in God to finish the, the rest. So be bold and daring. I don't know what it is God is putting in your heart, but be bold and, and daring. In Exodus chapter 4, verse 10 to 12, 
God got ready to promote Moses. Moses, it's time for you to go to the next level of your life. I want to make you the prime minister of my people. Moses said, ah, sorry God, you have the wrong candidate. I, I can't do it. I can't. I don't know if you believe that you can do all things through Christ that, that strengthens you. This was a time of elevation for Moses. And Moses was saying to God, what you are, about, what you are talking about cannot be for me because I am not able. I don't know who is doubting himself or herself. But in the mighty name of Jesus, the thought of courage, the thought of boldness, May God release unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's open to that passage. Exodus chapter 4, verse 10 to 12. Moses said to God, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither here to fall, nor since you have spoken unto thy servant. I am slow of speech. I am slow of tongue. Moses was trying to tell God why he is not qualified. I pray one more time. Every thought in your heart that is telling you you cannot do it, may God destroy that thought in Jesus' name. <laughs> Moses was comfortable hiding as a refugee. Moses was comfortable rot rotting away where he was. He was hiding from his destiny. But I pray for somebody here today. You will not run away from your destiny. I say it one more time. You will not run away from your destiny. And you will not surrender your blessing to somebody else. As, Jesus, as God was saying to Moses, it is you. God, Moses was trying to nominate somebody else. Trying to nominate somebody for the blessing that was meant for him. I pray one more time. The grace to think courageously. The grace to think boldly, to be able to possess what is your blessing. May God grant unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. Judges chapter 6, verse 12 to 13. Let's open to it very quickly. Judges chapter 6, verse 12 to 13. God got ready to promote another person, Gideon. But Gideon was thinking small of himself. If this point is for you, whenever that thought comes to your heart again that you cannot do it, rebuild the thought and say you are more than, you are more than able. The angel appeared to Gideon and said unto him, the Lord is with you, thou mighty man of valor. Verse 13. And Gideon said unto God, oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why is all this befalling us? In other words, I don't believe God. I don't believe that you are with me. I don't believe that you are with us. I don't believe that I am a man of valor. Because I look at my life and all I can see is defeat. There is more to see than your eyes can see. There is more to see than your eyes can see. I pray for you one more time. The grace not to run away from your own blessings. The grace not to run away from your own calling. May God Almighty grant unto you in Jesus' name. You see what happened in verse 15. Gideon continued and said unto God, Oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. Again, Gideon giving reasons why he cannot make it in life. He said to God, number one, the poorest family is where I come from in the land. And inside my own family, I am the poorest. So God, what you are talking about cannot be done. I declare upon your life. Your circumstance will not limit your future. I say this one more time. Your present circumstance will not limit your future. Gideon looked at himself. I said, no, I, I, I cannot. 
I am not able to. What you have experiencing now does not mean you will experience it tomorrow. And your past will not determine your future. I say concerning you, your past will not determine your future. The real you will not be silenced. As I imagine the life of Gideon, all the things that had happened and were happening around him had silenced the real man. Gideon was now living like a fake human being. Gideon was living below the plan of God for his life because of what he has experienced. I don't know how many of you have experienced situations that have dampened your faith. You have experienced situations that have killed your ambition. You have experienced situations that have told you that your dream is dead. But God has asked me to announce to you that your dream is still alive. That your destiny is still intact. That the plan of God for your life will still be accomplished. If that is you, rise on your feet and say, it is well with me. I will fulfill destiny. I will accomplish my dream. I will fulfill purpose. Go ahead and begin to declare. The real you will not be silenced. The purpose of God in your life will not be killed. You will not lose your confidence. You will not lose your hope. Your present circumstance will not determine your future. Your past experience will not limit your ambition. The real you will arise and manifest again. And so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Number three, you are more, you have more years in front of you than you think. You have more years in front of you than you, than you think. There are many people who believe that death is near. There are many people who are believing that it appears the time of departure is at hand. But that is a lie of the devil. If you are one of those thinking that thought in your heart, from today, reject it in the mighty name of Jesus. You see, when you think that death is near, you are actually accelerating the reality of death. That is why even the medical practitioners will tell you, you have to keep fighting. You have to keep believing that you will see the end of this sickness. Because the moment you surrender, then death has a grip on you. But I pray for somebody here today. Any one of you that has been thinking the thought of death, may that thought vanish today in Jesus' name. Yeah. Psalm 118 verse 17. Psalm 118 verse 17. Let's put it on the screen. Say, I shall not die but leave and declare the works of the Lord. You have to take a position whether you want to leave or whether you want to die. How many of you want to leave? And so shall it be in Jesus' name. So when that thought comes into your heart, you reject it and you declare, I shall leave and I shall not die. That's the reason why I believe this sermon came, is coming this morning. Because I don't know what the enemy has been whispering in your ears. But there are many more years in front of you than you think. I say it once, once again, there are more years in front of you than you think. In 1 Kings chapter 9, 19, 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 4 to 8. Elijah thought it was time to die. Elijah, even the man of God, even the anointed of God, somebody so anointed, he got so discouraged to the point that he thought it was time to die. Put it on the screen. 
1 Kings 19, verse 4 to 8. Elijah said, kill me, kill me. He went himself into a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. Elijah was hiding. Elijah became tired of life and he requested for himself that he might, he might die. God was not about to kill Elijah. God was not about to take his life. But he himself was ready to surrender his life. All eyes closed. I don't know whether you have been hearing the whispers of death. Or you have been feeling so discouraged that you think death is near. Just lift up the hands wherever you are. And those joining us online, lift up the hand as well. Just lift it up. Thank you, my sister. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my sister. All eyes closed. Thank you. Thank you, my sister. Thank you, my brother. For every one of you that the enemy has been putting that thought in your heart, I reject it concerning you in Jesus' name. You shall live and you shall not die in the mighty name of Jesus. God said to Elijah, no, no, no. Elijah was praying for death and God said, no. Rather than you dying, Elijah, arise, eat and drink. I pray for somebody here. Rather than you dying, the years in front of you will be more blessed in Jesus' name. I don't know the setback that you are going through. Why did Elijah all of a sudden began to think of dying? Because he was experiencing a major setback. He was experiencing a major crisis in his life. And God was trying to tell him, you will see the end of this crisis. You will see the end of this setback. I pray for you. You too will see the end of that setback in Jesus' name. You will see the end of that crisis in Jesus' name. A few years ago, I didn't know somebody was about to commit suicide. We were in this same auditorium. And God sent a word. And then I shared the word as I was laid in my heart. As I was getting home, I got that text message. Pastor, thank you. I was about to commit suicide. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Your life will not be terminated prematurely in Jesus' name. If you are going through sickness, you will see the end of that sickness. You will see the end of that failure. You will see the end of that shame. You will see the end of that sorrow. Whatever it is that you are experiencing that may be signaling death to you, you will see the end in Jesus' name. Your best years are still in front of you. I say this one more time. Your best years are still in front of you. Numbers chapter 11 verse 15. Numbers 11 verse 15. Again, Moses said to God, God, kill me. This is too much for me. Moses thought he had come to the point of death. And God said, no, but you are just beginning. I'm declaring upon your life. You are just beginning. I say it one more time. You are just beginning. Don't surrender your life. More glorious, glorious years are ahead in Jesus' name. It is not your time to die. Number four, you have more supply than you think. You have more supply than you think. Remember the title of the sermon. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. This sermon is trying to tell you to change the way you think. If you believe that there is not enough, the way you will live your life will be different from if you believe that God will supply your need. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. Philippians 4 verse 19. says, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. Whether you live a life of joy or a life of sorrow is a function of what you believe 
and a function of what you are thinking. There are people that have plenty and yet they are dying of frustration. Because they, are, they, they believe that's not even enough. And yet there are people that have nothing and are still thanking God and rejoicing. Believing that God will supply their needs. How many of you believe that God will supply your need? Look at Luke chapter 5, verse 5 to 8. Luke chapter 5, verse 5 to 8. What well, the story of Peter. The Bible said Peter worked so hard to fish and he caught nothing. And when God called him, Jesus Christ called him and said, come, don't worry, you go again. There, there is plenty. Jesus, uh, Peter said to Jesus, we have tried all night. We have toyed all night and we caught. The fact that you have not succeeded up till now does not mean you are not, a, you are not about to succeed greatly. Did you hear that? The fact that you have struggled to some extent up to now does not, mean you are about, does not mean you are about to keep struggling. Let me say it differently. As far as Peter could see, there was dryness. But Jesus Christ, in the same circumstance, saw abundance. May God Almighty open your eyes to see the abundance that God can provide in Jesus' name. And may God water every dry ground in your life. You know the story. Peter said there is nothing. God said there is plenty. Go once again. Peter went and he caught more fish than he could carry. As many of you as have been thinking that supply is drying up. I prophesy upon your life. May the supply that God alone can give manifest in your life in Jesus' name. There is more abundance than you think. Genesis chapter 26, verse 1 to 4. Genesis 26, verse 1 to 4. I'm going to spend a little time on this point because I don't know how many of you are thinking, oh, there is lack in my life. There is insufficiency in my life. What you think is what is affecting your life. The moment you begin to think more positively, you will see the abundance of God. In Genesis 26, verse 1 to 4, the Bible said, Isaac, all he saw was famine. All he saw was suffering. And he made up his mind to leave the, the country. And God said unto him, don't go. You may see lack. But I see abundance. For as many of you as are seeing lack, from today, may God open your eyes to see abundance in Jesus' name. Verse 12. Let's open to that. Genesis 26, verse 12. The same man that was about to run away because of famine, when he started to behave according to the leading of God, the Bible said he sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold. In the time of famine. When everything was dying, when all the plants were dying, that of Isaac multiplied a hundred times. I see concerning you divine provision. I said, I see concerning you divine provision. And for as many of you as begin to think from today that God Almighty can supply your need, may that be your portion in Jesus' name. Another example, I begin to round up this fourth point. First Kings chapter 17, verse 1 to 4. The Bible said there was famine again. And Elijah was struggling to feed. And God said unto him, in First Kings chapter 17, verse 1 to 4, Go to the brook of Cherith. I will send the birds, the birds of the air. I will send them to provide for you. What is God saying to you concerning that? In a supernatural way that you yourself cannot imagine, God will supply your need. I say it one more time, God will supply your need. Some of you may be saying, but pastor, I have tried. I have tried everything. I can't see where it's coming from. Was Elijah able to see that God can feed him through the birds? Did he have that in his plan? 
from unexpected sources, from supernatural sources, God will supply your need in Jesus' name. In verse 7 to 9 of that same passage, God said to Elijah, I have fed you with the birds, with the birds of the air, but now I am going to feed you from the hands of a poor widow. Think about that. You know, the usual thing is that God will send you to somebody who has plenty of money. But God sent Elijah to the house of a poor widow. What is the message? Even from the least expected places, God can sustain you. I pray for you that even from the area you least expect, from the source you least expect, may God supply your need in Jesus' name. Amen. And then in verse, 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 4 to 8, God decided to intervene himself and feed Elijah by the hands of angels. That is the only place that I have seen so far that angels came and brought direct food, cooked the meal, brought water, and gave to the man. What is God saying to somebody here today? If people refuse to help you, God himself, God himself will intervene and supply your need in Jesus' name. <laughs> you have more supply than you think. You have more. There is more supply available to you than you think. Psalm 23, verse 5. Psalm 23, verse 5. Let's open to it. That, that, that just came to my heart. I think I was even sleeping when God released that word for somebody here. I, I've claimed it myself. Say, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup. Many of us pray that God will give us victory over our enemies. That God will, will, will take them away. That they will fall down and die. But God said, no, in their presence, in their presence, I will prepare a table for you. I pray for somebody here today. In the presence of your enemies, God Almighty will do a wonder in your life. In the presence of those who have been attacking you, those who have been preventing you from moving forward, in their presence, God will supply your needs. God will lift you up and your blessing will overflow. And so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Joel chapter 2, verse 25 to 26. God says, my people shall not be ashamed. My people shall not be put to shame. I declare concerning you, may you never be put to shame in Jesus' name. Final point for today, you have more joy coming your way than you think. I said you have more joy coming your way than you think. So change your thought. Change the way you think about yourself. Change the way you think about your life. There is more joy coming than you think. Some of you may be saying, but pastor, I can't see it. You don't need to see it. It's not everything that your eyes can see. But the Lord has sent me to tell you that the joy ahead of you is bigger than the joy behind you. Job, you know the story of Job. Job lost all his children in one day. One day. All of them died. And Job lost all his properties. His farm, his houses, everything destroyed in one day. The buildings collapsed and fire burnt the farm. In one day, Job lost his marriage. That the wife was telling him, Curse God and die. I don't even need you again. Die, husband. Die. Job lost all his friends. And Job lost his health. So what remains? 
The children are gone. The money is gone. The marriage is gone. The health is gone. But look at what Job said. Job 19, verse 25. Let's put it on the screen. Job 19, 25. I know that my... Oh, there is so much crisis. There is so much suffering. There is so much loss. But I know that my... How many of you believe that your Redeemer is alive? And that your Redeemer will show himself mighty in your life in Jesus' name. What you will find out in the case of Job is that even though he was going through suffering and crisis, God was preparing a greater future for him. The Bible said the latter end of Job was better than his beginning. Job 42 verse 12. Let's put it on the screen. Job 42 verse 12. God blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. I'm believing God for you today that the years in front of you we have more celebrations than the years behind. I'm believing God for you that God will bless you more than you can imagine. God will bless you more than you can think. And that from today you will know and agree that there is more joy ahead of you than you think. In verse 16 to 17 of that passage, 16 to 17 it said, Job lived additional 100 and 40 years. In other words, God said, I know you suffered, but I'm going to make you live long enough to enjoy a new level of blessing. I don't know how many years you have lived, but God will keep you alive to witness a glorious future. God will keep you alive to experience a new level of divine favor. God will keep you alive to see the good of your children. And the good of your children, children. And the good of your children, children, children. In the mighty name of Jesus. Some of you are not saying amen. But I say it again. May God keep you alive to see a glorious future. May God keep you alive to see a better tomorrow. And may the years in front of you be better than the years behind. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name. We are prayed. God bless you, Psalm 30, verse 5. It says, Weeping me endure for a night. But joy cometh. There is more joy than you think. Begin to tell yourself that what you are going through is not the end of life. And in Job, verse 14, uh, Job chapter 14, verse 7, Job 14, verse 7, it says, Even when you cut down a tree, that I see hope for the tree. Let's put it on the screen so you can see clearly. Say, for there is hope for a tree. If it be cut down, it will sprout. You will sprout again. <laughs> I said one more time, you will sprout again. <laughs> Whatever aspect of your life may have been cut down, you will sprout again. <laughs> and then finally, Ecclesiastes chapter... 9 verse 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 4. Let's put it on the screen as we close the sermon. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 4. Say, for to him that is joined to the living, there is say, for as long as there is still breath in you, there is hope for you. How many people are alive here today? So you must agree with God that for as long as you are still among the living, there is great hope for you. I join my faith with yours that that God that has remembered you today to tell you to change the way you think in your heart, that your tomorrow will be all right. May that God show himself mighty in your life. 
Please rise on your feet and say, there is hope for me. My tomorrow will be all right. Go ahead and begin to declare. I reject the thought of death. I reject the thought of lack. I reject the thought of sorrow. I reject the thought that I'm not able. I reject every negative thought. I reject every negative thought. I am more capable. I can do all things through God that strengthens me. There are more years ahead of me. More years ahead of me than I think. I will not die but live and declare the glory of God. I shall not die but live and declare the glory of God. God Almighty shall supply my need. God Almighty, God Almighty, God Almighty shall supply my need. My tomorrow will be all right. My tomorrow will be all right. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. As you have spoken, so shall it be unto you. God will enable you to achieve your divine purpose. You will not die but live and declare the glory of God. In his own supernatural way, God will supply your need. And the joy ahead of you shall be break bigger than the joy behind you. And so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. God bless you. Please take your seat. I say, Pastor, thank you for that word from the Lord. I am the one that God is talking to. I need this God in my life. I believe that God can help me. I believe that God can save me. I believe that he can supply my needs more than ever before. I just want to put my life in his hands. If that is you, my brother, my sister, please come. I want to pray with you. As the choir takes the song, I have decided to follow Jesus. Please come. I have decided oh, if you put your life in his hands, Jesus. you will experience a new lease. I have decided God bless you. Come forward. God bless you, my sister. To follow Jesus. Keep coming. Keep coming. I have decided if you surrender your you life to him, Jesus. he will do a new thing. No turning back. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. No turning back. He will do I a new thing. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my brother. To I want to surrender. Me. No turning, I have pray for me. I surrender my life. Jesus. I surrender my life. I have decided. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided Thank you, Jesus. to follow Jesus. No turning. Brothers and my sister, please say after me, my Lord Jesus, I surrender my life unto you. Please forgive me, save me, help me, perfect my life, O oh God. In any way that I have wandered away from your presence, please bring me back. Deliver me from the stronghold of the enemy. And let me experience the joy that you have promised. 
In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. God bless you. Please rise up and follow my sister waving to you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless. Let's clap for them. God bless you. God bless you. And then the rest of us, let's just rise on our feet. Just rise on our feet. I don't know whether you are here today. There have been the thoughts of death running through your mind. Maybe you have been thinking, oh, death is near. Or maybe you have been thinking, you are just not capable, you are not competent enough to do this thing. Or you have been thinking, oh, there is no supply anymore. Or you have been thinking, oh, joy has ended. Maybe there is no hope anymore. I just want to pray with you and strengthen you. As they take the song, he is able more than able. That's why God sent me here to ask you to change the thoughts in your heart. Because what you are thinking is not correct. God can do much more than you think. Please come. If you are in any of those categories, you've been thinking that there is death, death is near. You've been thinking that you cannot do it, you cannot make it. Please come. Or you are thinking that supply has finished. You are thinking that supply has finished. That there is no way. Please come, please come. For your sons and your daughters for as many of you that the enemy has been whispering death into your heart you will not die but live and declare the glory of God for as many of you as God as, as you have been hearing and feeling thinking that you are not capable you are more capable than you think the almighty God that says I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me that send that word unto you we enable you to accomplish his purpose for your life in the mighty name of Jesus. And the supply that is greater than your thought. May God bring your way in the mighty name of Jesus. And more joy than you can think. It does not matter what you are going through right now. The joy ahead of you shall be bigger than the joy behind you. And so shall it be. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. God bless you. It is well with you. God bless you.